Okay, so that's those three. Now let's move on to the general rules. So, general rules, uh, and I please forgive me, this bit's going to be a little bit dry because um, it's, it's basically stuff that you already know, but we'll go over it anyway. So, clear, continuous, and consistent lines using a sharp pencil. Okay, um, we'll see what that means. No shading. And ensuring relative proportions. So the first two are pretty straightforward. Okay, we this is not a creative process. This is uh, we are basically trying to reproduce what we are seeing. Um, one way to ensure that you are reproducing properly is to try and ensure relative proportions. Now, when I go through the examples, we'll see what I mean by that. But that's one way to make sure that what you are seeing is what you are drawing. Um, four, drawings should take up more than 50% of the page area. Um, you just have to remember that. Basically, it's, it's kind of very similar to the idea of graphs. Because the bigger you can draw something, the more accurately you might be able to represent it. And the more small details can be made uh, more apparent and more visible. Um, a title should describe what is being drawn. The scale of the drawing should be stated. All relevant structures should be labelled with straight lines and to the sides. Okay, so those are the general rules. Um, they're pretty straight, uh, pretty self-explanatory. So let's move on. So here we have a, a, an example of a macroscopic structure that we might want to do a biological drawing of. It is a heart, for example, um, and it's in front of us. And it's so it's been dissected. It's a transverse section. So you can see on one side that is the left, no, sorry, the right ventricle. And on this side, we have our left ventricle. And we are going to draw that structure in a biological drawing. Now, below that, I have a diagram of a heart. It's kind of inverted, looking at it the other way around from the other view. Um, but this is here to emphasize the point that, as we've said, we need to have a good understanding of the structures we are drawing before we do our biological drawing. We, we need to know what we are looking for. We need to know what we can recognize in the structure that we are looking at. Um, clear, continuous, consistent lines. Okay, no shading. So I'm going to imagine that I've got a piece of paper something like this. And this is the space in which I will do my drawing, OK? Um, obviously, I'm doing this digitally, so I can cheat a little bit. Um, I've made sure that my pencil is sharp. Uh, it should uh, give me consistent lines. Um, so I've got that advantage. But otherwise, uh, let's, uh, let's continue. OK, so. Um, Relative proportions. So I'm, I'm going to roughly draw out the shape that I see. Okay. And it's... So, as a line, I'm pretty happy with that. There's no obvious overlapping lines. There are... Uh, and it's pretty consistent all the way around in terms of lightness and darkness, because even that should be consistent. Um, and now let's get into it. Okay, now the important thing that I'm considering here is to maintain the proportions of what I see. So already I've gone wrong. Okay, because this proportion, so sketching now on the actual heart dissection itself, it's very important that I maintain these proportions that I'm indicating here because it's these proportions that are telling me something important about the heart structure. So it's these things that I must reproduce. And already you can see in my diagram that I have not represented this dimension very well. And so when somebody looks at my biological drawing, it will 
not be a good representation of the thing that I saw. So this is not me being a good artist as such, it's more about relaying or being able to get across what it is that I actually saw. And if, if I'm mistaken in that, then I'm going to be misrepresenting what I see. It's essentially like lying. Okay, so this is the importance of what we're doing here. All right, so let's have another go at that. Okay, and I'm a little bit happier with that. And then on the other side, so the wall around the ventricle is pretty much same distance all the way around. And there's a bit of variation and there's a little bit of folding. But I'm actually quite happy with that as it is. Um, so that's what I can see there. Okay, now, and the other thing that's important is, is even though this diagram shows us so much of what we could see, potentially, we also have to ask ourselves whether we can actually see these things or not. And if we can't see them in, in our, if we can't recognize them in, in the actual object itself, and we haven't represented it in our drawing in particular, then we should not be labeling it as such. Okay. Okay, so now how do we label? So labeling has to be done with um, with straight lines. Okay, so let's begin. So on this side, and we need to make sure that wherever possible our labels are on one side and that the labels and the lines that indicate these different parts of the structure don't crisscross over each other. Okay, so this is my, so I can, I can straighten this line, so I'm also I've got a bit of an advantage here, but that's the line there, and that is my right ventricle, okay. Um, and so we're going to just go along in that sequence. So even though I'm tempted to label my left ventricle right now, I'm just going to move along um, in terms of the... So I'm just going to go in the order of the structures as they are here, okay? So if my right ventricle is there, then this... This right here, that would be the ventricle wall, right ventricle wall. Wall of right, wall of the right ventricle. So if that's the muscular wall of the right ventricle. And then we have this part right here. So roughly I'm keeping my labels in a kind of line as well. Um, that's the intraven interventricular septum. Okay. I, now at this level, I can't tell whether those are arteries or veins. So I'm just going to call them coronary blood vessels. Okay. Uh, now here we have next, straighten that out, we have our left ventricle and here we have our the wall of the left ventricle okay so I'm just labeling the key, key things I'm labeling I mean you know you know the structures that you are expected to know at a level 
So those are the things that you should be able to recognize and you should be able to label in uh, a biological drawing. So that's, uh, that's a drawing at a macroscopic scale, okay, a biological drawing. Uh, what we should do is have a scale now. I don't have a scale to hand because, you know, this is an image that I have obtained from the internet. But what, what I did research was that the average human heart is eight, roughly eight centimeters or 8.5 centimeters uh, wide. Okay, so just to give an idea of scale, I would put something like that so that I'm, I've got across what the scale of this thing is. I should put a title also. So, um, what should I say? Human heart transverse section. Human heart transverse section. I've got a scale there. Got my biological drawing. It's taking up, in my opinion, it's taking up more than half the page. And I've got my labels with straight lines. Um, and I think I'm going to call that complete.